Okay, what we have here is a Model X Tillotson carburetor for a Model A. This is not the original carb that came on the Model A, and that may upset some people, but I love how they run. I think they work better than the Tillotson, than the, uh, sorry, the Zenith that they came with. Um, you can identify it by the X right there, Model X underneath. And on the other side there, the lower you got Tillotson, Toledo, Ohio. Uh, these are getting remanufactured today, but they won't have the names on them, of course. Sometimes it won't have a marker at all, it won't say X, and sometimes it'll say X, I can't remember, XR or whatever the other number is. <clears throat> but they're all the same thing. It's an updraft style. Throttle goes here, fuel comes in over here, choke is here, intake manifold up. Um, this is a really nice one. I just bought it on, on the Ebays this week because we bought a new truck. So and it still has a Zenith on it and it doesn't run quite, quite right. So we're going to rebuild this one and honestly it's in great shape. So let's just talk about some of the things to watch out for and how to put it together. Um, this is made of pot metal which some people slam on but if you think about it that's what all modern carburetors, Hollies and all the like are made from pot metal. Um, they are prone to warping here and there, so this flange here between the upper and lower body, you got to make sure those are flat and fit nice between the two. The upper piece tends to get bent from the gasket. Um, but the number one place that warpage happens is where the intake manifold is connected. People put these big squishy gaskets on there and wrench them down and it bends the flange. So I filed this one back flat, <clears throat> just use a large smooth file, uh, it's a soft metal so it's kind of like filing aluminum. You got to uh, use a file card and, and clean, clean your file quite a bit. Um, some of the other things that go wrong, the threads here oftentimes are stripped out because after they got done rent, wrenching down on it and bending the flange, they tighten it some more and they end up sh uh, stripping these threads. A lot of times you'll see these through bolted with just a nut on the bottom. You can heel coil this and fix it. Um, this one happens to be in great shape. So it's not a deal breaker. Uh, one that can be is if the inlet for the fuel is cross threaded or stripped out. That can pretty much ruin your day for the upper, the upper half of the uh, carburetor. Okay. Uh, this one's all apart. Everything looks pretty good except maybe the inlet there is bent. I noticed at the end after I cleaned it, but I don't really believe in running filters on Model A's. You know, they, they need to run on a, a rich diet of rocks and, and various insects and mice and things. You know, gotta have variety in their diet. So, <clears throat> um, let's talk about the circuitry and how this thing works. Um, start from the beginning, the fuel basically comes in through here, through the top. Model A's are just gravity fed, of course. They pop through, the fuel pops through the top here, and this is where the float and uh, needle will be to control the fuel. Um, you can see there's another second hole there, which is just a vent. So if your float isn't set properly, there's a chance you'll get fuel pouring out of the top here. So fuel comes in here, it goes into the bowl, and uh, there's basically two ways out of the bowl. One will be down through the main jet, and the other one will be to go into the enrichment uh, needle over here on the side, which is where you fiddle with it on the dash there. <clears throat> so let's follow the main jet. So the fuel goes down through the main jet, comes out this drilling here in the bottom, and it's from there that it actually gets pulled up the jet. This is this is very similar to a Stromberg and actually get pulled up through here along with some air and we'll end up in the venturi and going into the engine. So at the same time fuel can come from the bowl here, go down into the enrichment needle into this channel here and then depending on if you turn the screw out on the enrichment needle you can you can add more fuel to the bottom here which will go up the main jet. Um, 
there's another circuit, the idle circuit, and that spans both both castings here. <clears throat> so you have an idle enrichment screw here, which goes to two tiny, so behind this plug here, it goes to two tiny little drillings in the bore that are on either side of the plate, of the throttle plate. And so when the throttle is closed and the engine is pulling a lot of vacuum, fuel is actually pulled up through that circuit and released post-throttle plate. All this other stuff is pre-throttle. So you can see there's a small basically drilled jet there pressed into the bottom so the fuel actually is fed from the same place it comes up out of the the bottom here post main jet and um, goes up through is regulated by this needle and then is allowed to pass up through here any excess that um, doesn't go up through there maybe leaks past the needle and comes back and starting heading back out the threads actually drains back through this hole here through this guy back down. You, if you have fuel leaking out of the enrichment screw here, you probably maybe have one of these plugged or something like that. So this guy controls the fuel when you're honking it. This guy controls the fuel when you're cold starting in particular. And this one controls while you're idling. There's air that's allowed into the system. Well, so this is what allows air into the main bowl, but there's another small drilling here that allows air um, into the, um, the emulsifying jet that sticks up through here. So it's a lot like a Stromberg. You have air and fuel that get mixed together and come out. Um, this is a fine specimen, so let's start putting some parts together. So, the main jet that's about a 43 thousandth diameter, you can check it by sticking a 43 drill through there. If it's larger than that, then somebody's drilled it out on you. Thought maybe they were making a little more power than, than you. Important thing is to make sure that all, that all the channels are clean. Um, I just washed this whole carburetor out with lacquer thinner and a brush. Lacquer thinner does just fine getting dried up uh, fuel and things out of it. So we have the needle and uh, seat assembly here. These usually don't wear too bad and you know they're chrome plated and it's typically all fine. So uh, this guy threads in, there's a gasket, there's one small gasket goes there. It seals the body to the inlet. By the way, all the tools you need is two flat blade screwdrivers, a large one and a small one, just a small pick, a 11 seconds, 3 8 7 16 and 1 half inch wrench. this um, body here is you can't fit a socket on it unless you have a very narrow very thin socket so we have that we have our float and our needle check your float and make sure that it's not banged up or has any um, leaks in it. They're pretty dainty, pretty light. See it goes there. With the needle. Okay, found my little axle. It was hiding underneath this paper here. So we just slide that baby in. Nothing holds it in place besides um, the sides of the wall here. So you have to keep an eye on it until it's actually in the uh, lower casting. Okay, so that guy's about ready to go. 
Uh, back on the lower, <coughs> we have the emulsion tube. It has a gasket, one wee little gasket here. That kind of separates where the air, the air is going to come in radially. Um, the fuel and air horse is going to come out of here. The air is going to come in high and going around here. And the fuel is going to come in from the bottom. So drop that guy down in there. Make sure that gasket didn't slip. Make sure your screwdriver is narrow enough that it doesn't tear up the threads that hold this guy in because those are the same threads that you have to put a, a plug on into. So as we tighten that up, by the way, no, no major pressure on any of this stuff. That would be the number one cause of trouble. So now we have our jet in there. <clears throat> We need to cap this guy off, so we have the plug for the bottom and the gasket there. it from rattling out of there. You have to remember Model A's shake quite a bit so it's not going to stay attached to the car very long without it. Just get it started and adjust that later. We have um, put in this guy and this this gets abused quite a bit so this is the needle that is controlled by the rod in your dash it threads inside of this little sleeve here and it has this spring on the end there and that's what kind of holds it tight so you see that it takes a little pressure to stick that in there so you gotta shove it through a little bit and get the thread started but don't thread it in more than about a turn. You, what you want to do is get this installed first. You don't want the needle to sit low and then wrench this sucker down and drive the needle right into the base. So the orifice that it's sealing against, unfortunately, is part of the casting. So if somebody screws this down really tight, which it happens inevitably, right? Someone doesn't know their car, doesn't know their Model A's or, or whatever, they jump in and they turn that thumb screw the wrong way or they really wrench it down because they have some other problem going on. They have it too rich coming through the idle circuit or something. And you'll set a seat on this brass here, but you'll also do it in the housing and it's not going to run right after that. So not easy to repair because it's way down there. is what goes around there and it turns that that guy that sticks up out of there it has a half in it and it turns that but also when you pull the rod to choke that's what turns your choke so let's put the choke on next there's our choke shaft lock washer and nut and then we need two screws to hold the plate on and the lever. So the shaft goes in first. I just dressed this up. There's no real grooves on it. It fits relatively sloppy in here. It does not have bushings or anything because it doesn't really matter if it leaks a little. Sorry, that's not the choke. This is the choke.
plate, of course, is not circular. It's sort of an elliptical shape, so that the plate can't ever go 90 degrees. Make sure you at least have your lock washers for your screws. It's a good idea to put a little Loctite blue on there. At least it's an updraft, so if one of these fall off, the chances of it getting all the way up in the engine is worse than a modern downdraft. But so the choke, what it does is it restricts airflow into the carburetor before the throttle and before the jets. So when you close this choke, vacuum. There's now vacuum down here, and that vacuum is going to pull fuel out of the main jet and put a lot more fuel in. And you know, if you try to prime it a lot or if you try to run it choked, you'll end up getting fuel dripping out of the bottom here. So this hole is meant to be here is to let the fuel out that you shouldn't uh, put in there by running the choke too much. So that guy's on there, so now we just need a lever. <clears throat> So this little detent here goes with the lever, goes in the uh, groove of the uh, adjuster here, then the lock washer, then the nut. see there's not much to these things. Um, set that aside. Or actually let's put the top and lower together because the throttle, I need to have this float secured. So we have our gasket. Again I filed this flat. Do what you can on this guy, but because of all these protrusions in the way, you really can't file it too much. But uh, we really want to make sure that we can seal these circuits, right? So there's several air and fuel circuits passing through the middle there. By the way, if your carb is exceptionally dirty and crusty, you may want to take out the plugs and chase those paths. Um, honestly, this thing was so nice and it was like brand new, so I didn't want to do it. But it has, this carb has two lead balls pressed in the bottom. I'll show them here in a second. These are three Philister head screws. They'll hold up and lower together. They're pretty notorious for vibrating apart, so make sure you have your Make sure you have your lock washers on there, and it's not a bad idea to put a little Loctite on these as well. They're pretty much the exact same sort of screws as on the Strongberg that we routinely shake apart on our Model T Speedster. So the lead balls, you have one, two, and then you have this plug here. So if you take those three guys out, then you can chase all the circuits in the whole, all the joints in the whole carburetor. All right, so now we're down to the throttle. <clears throat> now the throttle, it does matter if this fits tightly. It does matter if it leaks. Essentially, this will be an air leak directly into the engine during idle, which is can be problematic. It'll make it race, run too fast. It'll, 
you know, if it develops on you, it'll inherently want the engine to run lean. Um, this one fits great. Very little movement there, but it's nice and free. Um, the shaft is brass, but the bearings on either side look like they're steel. Yeah, they're rusty, so they're steel. I just ran a little scotch bright through them to clean them up. They're good to go. That's where that's how the shaft goes. And then we have our throttle plate, same deal. Whoever had this apart marked which way it should go, which I paid no attention to when I tore it apart. So we'll just figure it out by trial and error. So when you tighten this at the end there, you want to hold it closed, make sure this screw is all the way back so you're, you're bottoming out on the plate, and then tighten them up. You want a nice tight fit there so you know you can set your idle. That is it. Okay, so. Screw in the enrichment there. She just touches there, about a quarter turn. That's about where we want that. So, bottom, there's half, there's one turn. So, there you are. Idle speed, better give it, you know, hold the throttle closed until it touches and then, you know, give it another turn or so, just so you have something there to start with. But it's ready to put on the engine, goes right in place of the stock Zenith. You do need a gasket up here, I'd advise against a big squishy one like that. Looks like it leaked anyway. Um, usually it's because the intake and this surface are not flat. You should be able to get away with a nice thin gasket in flat surfaces. And there you go. Get in your Model A and ride.